All right, I think I am going to uh, just get started here. We'll we'll have the core people trickle in as they get done, I think. Um, all right, let's see. Actually, a, a number of new PRs this week, uh, and updated PRs for that matter, and closed PRs. It's been busy. Um, so there is a new PR that changes the way that uh, P-Log works. And I have to confess, I didn't look super carefully at what this is doing. But um, Kifu approved it and asked for Sam to take a look. And I CC'd Niha on that. Um, hopefully, we'll get more feedback. Hopefully, this is OK. But in any event, um, that is there. Um, Radic has a really interesting PR that lets you generalize uh, the object store to use an alien store. Previously, uh, alien store was restricted restricted in, in, in Crimson to using blue store, but now it can basically use any uh, existing backend object store, which means that we can test um, uh, both mem store and, and maybe even file store. I don't know, know that anyone will ever try it, but, um, but theoretically. So um, the goal here is to be able to get a better sense of how much overhead we're seeing in Alien Store itself. Uh, so that's that's really good. That's really interesting. Um, let's see. There is a new PR for RGW tracing. Uh, so that's good. Matt reviewed that. Um, buffer list. Uh, optimization for the C string uh, conversion. That's good. And then a uh, PR that makes it so that the finisher thread is better about giving up CPU. And that's a little controversial, I think, but, um, but Kifu and Casey are, are looking at it and they look like they're bringing up the right questions. So uh, that's good. Closed. Um, most of this is from Ori on the IBM side. He submitted last week a huge slew of PRs, and uh, a couple of them uh, had issues, and a couple of them looked fine. So the ones that were fine, Kifu merged. Uh, yeah, all of those look look reasonable. Um, Adam's old PR for um, changing some of the behavior uh, with uh, the way that the blue store caches are implemented for charting um, got just kind of, uh, it was closed by the stale bot. We haven't touched it in a while. Um, I'll have to ask Adam about that and find out if he still wants to work on that or not. Beyond that, Lots of updated stuff. Uh, this optimized objects memory allocation using pools. I want to review that one. I haven't gotten to it yet, but that looks really interesting. Um, otherwise, not a whole lot going on there. Some things that are in testing that hopefully will merge next week. All right. Oh, we're starting to get the people from Core in now. I just went through all the PRs. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else really interesting going on here in the no movement section. Still need to get back to the bidding, age bidding code, but that's farther down the to do list right now. And Adam's fine grain locking for BlueFS. That one is interesting when he's, when he's back. That one will be. Neat if you can if you can do something with it. All right, um, Randy or anyone else, um, uh, any any PRs I missed that you know of? All right. Well, then moving on. Uh, 
Redick and I, uh, Redick Sam and I, actually the, earlier this week uh, uh, had like a one-hour midnight uh, powwow to discuss um, uh, crimson behavior in the reactor. Um, I think Sam was wanted to make sure that we weren't uh, getting too uh, bogged down and looking at performance uh, changes, like minute performance changes in the reactor, and uh, that that's I don't think that was really a big concern. Um, more just uh we're not seeing any really easy to fix low hanging fruit there um so I, I think the gist of it is that we're probably not going to easily make the current csar reactor um in crimson significantly faster without without a lot of really difficult work um that being said the the next goal is to implement multi-reactor so uh, Greg Farnham is going to work on that, uh, hopefully starting pretty soon. He's getting caught up to speed right now. But um, the good news is that we're, we're seeing efficiency already that's kind of in line or better than uh, classic. Sometimes it's you know not a ton better, like 20 or 30%. Uh, sometimes in some cases where, where the, uh, the, the crimson code is more emphasized, uh, in in kind of the the really ideal case in Radix tests, I think he was saying that he was seeing up to like two or three hundred percent. So um, in reality, we'll probably end up somewhere in, in between those numbers. I'm, I'm hoping that um, that you know maybe we'll see between fifty and one hundred percent real uh, later on. But uh, you know it's all just kind of a little bit guessing right now. Um, but the good news is that it's is generally better overall, even even when we're testing Blue Store. Uh, and that's exactly what we want. So um, multi-reactor is the next going to be the next big performance win, and it should be major when we can use uh, you know multiple uh, reactor threads per per OSD. Um, for for C star or sorry C store that maybe matters less. Maybe we'll see. Um, and we're gonna have a lot of decisions to make when we get there. But uh, for now, this is where we're at. Um, Let's see, beyond that, uh, Reddick, I already mentioned, had built in this ability to test MemStore inside AlienStore, and that's really neat. Um, I need to take a look at that. Uh, while he's been doing that, I've been working on adding in uh, some fixes, well, not fixes, just restructuring of the MemStore code based on some stuff I did like three years ago. Um, and also uh, a new vector object class that at least used to be faster than uh, the buffer list implementation that we have now. Uh, we'll see if that's still the case with all the optimization work that Radix done on buffer list, but um, it, it, at least potentially it could be faster still. Um, the only other thing I've really got is that uh, there's been a lot of ongoing discussion about CephFS and RBD kernel versus user land clients. Um, this kind of came up as a result of um, a discussion on PNFS that Jeff Layton uh, presented uh, earlier this week. Um, he's really interested in trying to make it so that we can have clients talking PNFS uh, via what's available already in the kernel and then translating that to CephFS behind the scenes. Um, that might involve potentially like uh, using Ganesha and tying it as a library directly into the MDS, or maybe making a library version of the MDS and kind of bolting it onto the side of Ganesha. Or it could mean potentially something really different, like, um, uh, well, yeah, I guess I don't totally understand it, but but actually changing kind of the way that, uh, that we talk natively. Um, in any event, it's it's all you know kind of um, contentious, and different people have different ideas on if we should do that and how we should do that if we should. Um, so we'll see where it goes. Um, Jeff's kind of actively uh, seeking feedback on it and and kind of deciding, trying to decide what he wants to do with it. Um, in addition to that, I've kind of brought up a longstanding. Um, uh, interest of mine, which is to uh, uh, make user land CephFS clients themselves faster. Uh, whether or not that means improving our current 
uh, uh, fuse code to be faster or making fuse itself faster or trying to look at something like Zuffs um, from, from NetApp. Uh, I don't know. Zuffs is basically dead at this point. It sounds like uh, NetApp went through like a restructure and laid off a bunch of people. Uh, but the idea itself may, maybe isn't bad, just maybe the implementation wasn't ideal. So um, anyway, uh, lots of discussion on that right now too. We'll see if it goes anywhere. That's all I've got. Um, any questions or comments on any of that stuff? All right, then uh, we'll open it up. Uh, does anyone have anything that they would like to talk about this week? All right, fast meeting, guys. Excellent. You know, I'll get back to work. Have a great weekend, or great week and weekend, everyone. Thanks, Mark. You too. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, bye. See you later. Bye.